Hey, welcome everybody into the Wells Tech Garage for this month's episode of Tech Connect. We're going to go over some stuff that we had during that last class, which was the lesser known EVAP systems. We covered things like the DMTL system that we find on BMWs and a lot of European models, when it is some older bypass uh, split purge seal systems on older Asian vehicles, went into some, uh, a little bit into Subaru, some into Volkswagen, kind of covered a little bit of everything that we haven't covered up to this point so that you guys just have a basic understanding on the different systems. So let's start first of all with the tech question that I asked you guys in relation to EVAP. A lot of you guys got it right and um, a lot of you guys gave me an answer that I didn't really expect to get, but that's what makes this fun. So let's just start with the question. It read, an older vehicle with a standard purge seal EVAP system is being diagnosed for a P0455 large leak code, super common. A tech grabs a smoke machine and a scan tool, installs the smoke machine on the green test port, the green cap test port under the hood and uses a scanner to close the vent. Test passes. No leak is found. He proceeds to cycle the vent numerous times to check for an intermittent problem. Still, no leak is found. No smoke is found. He removes the gas cap to confirm that smoke is actually traveling into the entire system, not like that uh, Oldsmobile Alero that we talked about a few months ago. And it is. There is smoke through the entire system. So go out to the good old internet and he uses a silver bullet repair resource, whatever he may have access to, and finds that there are hundreds of reported issues for vent solenoid replacement. So a technician decides to replace it because it could be intermittently failing. Clears the codes, runs the car out. A week later, the car's back. Same code P0455. What did the technician miss and what is the most likely failure here? So I had an idea um, when I wrote the question of what I wanted the answer to be and I was surprised I got some of what I expected and then I also got another answer that um, I didn't really expect right away but you guys uh, picked up on it right away and that has to do with that green test port. A lot of you guys had mentioned that the Schrader valve that's inside of that test port, as soon as you, you thread on the uh, fitting for the smoke machine, you just basically took that Schrader valve out of the mix, right? If that was leaking, just like in a, on an AC system, it'll pass the test every single time. If that's where you're pressurizing it or applying vacuum to it, you've taken that Schrader valve out of the system at that point. So the Schrader valve inside of that green test port could definitely be the problem. And everybody who gave me that answer, I did give you that uh, as a correct answer. So nice job. Uh, not exactly what I was looking for, but it is a totally correct answer. What I was looking for was the fact that the technician never bothered to check the purge solenoid. He checked the vent, he cycled it, he was checking for intermittence, that's great, but he probably didn't have a good understanding of how, how or why a P0455 large leak code sets. So when the computer starts to run this large leak test, what does it do? It turns on the purge solenoid, our front door, and it closes the back door of the vent solenoid. Now it starts to watch the fuel tank pressure sensor and it should see the fuel tank pressure start to go down into vacuum, right? If it never goes anywhere, never goes down into vacuum, it's gonna set a large leak code, right? Because it doesn't see anything. It thinks that maybe the gas cap is off, there's a break in a hose that's relatively large. Something is causing this thing not to draw any vacuum because it has stayed pretty much right at the top. So right away you think maybe the vent is stuck open, maybe the gas cap's off or something like that. So that's what this tech thought. He thought it was a vent problem. But what if the computer opens up the purge solenoid, but the purge solenoid never physically opens? There's no position sensor on there. On older cars, there was no strategy to watch fuel trims. There's no strategy to watch the oxygen sensors to verify that the purge actually opened. Older cars just trusted that when the computer said open, it did its job. Not always the case, right? So if that purge, if our front door was stuck closed, the computer turns that on, the fuel tank pressure sensor is never going to respond. It's going to think there's a large leak and it's going to set a large leak code. It won't set a purge code. So in this case, the technician missed the purge solenoid and that is the most likely failure in this scenario. So that's the answer I was looking for. I did get that from quite a few of you, which is excellent. All of your hats and shirts have been sent out at this point, so check in the mail if you haven't gotten them yet, but you should have. Um, if you guys have any more questions on this or you want to discuss it further, definitely reach out via email or uh, comment 
on this video and uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if this is something that you've run into or uh, you had happened to you at one point. So let's get to now the um, questions that you guys asked during the broadcast. We'll start out with Nick. Nick asked, in your opinion, out of all the EVAP systems, which one seems to be the most straightforward to diagnose? Uh, I'll give you two answers, Nick. First answer is whichever system you're most familiar with. If you're a VW guy or a Chrysler guy and you're working with leak detection pump systems all the time, that's probably your easiest system to diagnose. If you're a GM guy or a Ford guy and you're working with, with uh, purge seal systems all the time, that's probably your easiest to diagnose. Or, you know, the list goes on and on depending on every system. That would be for those guys who are very specific, like uh, dealership level maybe, where they only know that one system, potentially, if that's all those vehicles run. Now, let's say that you're asking in terms of like the independent shop, seeing every EVAP system come in the door, which one's the simplest? I would say the standard purge seal system that you find on GM vehicles or Ford vehicles. Um, those are probably the two easiest vehicles to work on EVAP with. Uh, I think GM might, uh, might win with that just because of uh, a lack of changes over the, year, um, over the years. GM purge seal systems are probably the most straightforward to diagnose. Uh, Caleb. Caleb came on and he asked, can you get a false positive from a seizing pump? Now he was referring to that DMTL pump that we were talking about on that BMW. And with that DMTL pump, the BMW is watching the current that that thing draws as it's pumping air into the system. The better sealed the system, the more current that it's going to draw. So his question was, will a seizing pump cause a false positive? I don't want to say no, never, because there's always going to be that one time that it's possible. I would say, Caleb, that it is incredibly unlikely. We have that threshold, right? I believe on that BMW it was 12 milliamps at the bottom and 40 milliamps at the top that that pump needs to reach on both the calibration test as well as the actual leak test. So this pump turns on and we get our amperage starting to scale up. We're going through our 20,000th leak um, check our calibration point and maybe we pulled, let's call it 15, let's call it 20 milliamps. All right, so now that is our base. We want our leak test to surpass 20 milliamps. So if our pump were to start seizing up, maybe it's due to heat, it's possible that maybe that climbs up 25, 30, 35 milliamps, but as soon as that thing crosses that 40 milliamp mark, it is no longer a trusted value and sets a code for high amperage draw. Okay, so that's why I think it would be very highly unlikely because, especially because that pump has already run for the calibration test, it's getting warmer, and usually as the pump gets hotter and hotter, the seizing up gets uh, tighter and tighter, I guess would be, for lack of a better term, the amperage draw would go up. And we're talking 12 to 40 milliamps is our, our range here. That's a very, very small amount of current. I would say it's incredibly unlikely that a seizing pump could cause it, but I say it's never going to cause it and somebody's going to go out there and find one that it did. Um, so I would say less likely than uh, a lot of things, Caleb. Great question. Mike came on. Mike asked, what protects the system if the pump shorts out? Again, we're talking DMTL. What protects the computer? What protects the wiring? What protects the system? Well, like most things, it is going to be a fuse. As you can see here in this diagram, Right in the center of the diagram, you see our diagnostic module for tank leakage. This is our DMTL pump. And if we follow pin four up into the fuse box, you will see a 30 amp fuse protecting this circuit. Now 30 amps seems a little bit excessive, but you gotta remember that we're running a pump as well as a heater circuit inside of this thing. So we do need a little bit of amperage wiggle room. And then also there is a splice in there, so we are feeding something else with that 30 amp fuse. But basically that 30 amp fuse is going to give us protection if the pump fully shorts to ground. Okay, it's gonna protect the system, protect the wiring. Um, so there is a 30 amp fuse in there. Great question, Mike. Uh, up next, Christopher and Joe both came on and asked the exact same question. How would a clogged filter cause evap issues? And now we're not talking fuel filter or air filter or cabin filter, we're talking the evap system filter, okay? This is going to be mounted on the back side, on the other side, on the um, fresh air side of the vent solenoid, okay? The vent solenoid is going to be here. This is our back door that closes to seal off the rest of the system that's over here. So our tank and our purge solenoid and everything else will be over here. Our vent is going to be on the non-tested side 
of the EVAP system. So what kind of failures could that cause? Well, we know with an EVAP system, as heat changes, we have to be able to vent in fresh air in and out to accommodate for pressure or vacuum building up. So now all of a sudden, if we plug up this filter and create a very hard um, path, a very difficult path for air to flow through, we're not going to be able to allow for that expansion and contraction. We could be setting codes in the system for that. And then also, if you take and you're filling up with fuel, that's a large amount of volume flowing into the tank. We need to have somehow to displace all that fuel vapor and air that's inside of that tank, goes through the canister, out through the vent solenoid, and that fresh air is supposed to be able to vent out. Now, if we get too much pressure inside of there, it shuts off the fuel nozzle. So a plugged up EVAP filter could cause the handle um, to keep clicking off while you're filling up with fuel. That's usually going to be the first thing that a customer notices is that, that they can't fill it with fuel. It keeps clicking, clicking, clicking because you're forcing a large volume of fuel down into there and, and that pressure that's inside of there already has nowhere to go because that filter is plugged up. Okay, so great question. I hope that answers it for you guys. And then last but not least, Hans came on and had a question specifically about VW Audi. He said, on any of the systems, have you ever seen a purge valve open during a leak detection test? Hans, I would say that off the top of my head, I would say no. I don't think I can think of a designed purge valve opening during a leak detection test. If you're talking leak detection in general and all we're doing is testing the system, well then we'd have to have the purge open to bring the system down in a vacuum, but then it would close. There's no way that we can be feeding engine vacuum during a leak test. It would completely stop the, the point of the leak test. The leak test has to take that system and look at it over time in a sealed environment. That's how we're going to check it for leaks. I can't see how a purge solenoid is intended to be open during that leak checking. It just kind of is, is counterintuitive to how the system is going to function. You know, you're never going to notice a leak if you have a constant vacuum supply. As long as you have a constant vacuum supply with that purge open, that system might look like it's passing all the time. You know, you could have a, a pinhole leak in a purge solenoid that's, that's creating vacuum in the system that could actually flaw a leak test and pass a leak test potentially. Um, so I would say that VW and Audi I wouldn't see being any different. That purge, purge solenoid should be closed. I don't know, um, I know you were talking about it a little bit in the chat about it. Um, I don't know why it's opening for you. I would, I would see um, if, if the test is being run right with the scan tool maybe. There's something else going on here. I don't think it's intended to open like that, Hans. So if you find a different answer than that, I'm very interested. I couldn't find anything else. I would say that it is not normal to have a purge solenoid open during a leak detection test. So that's that. Those were the um, questions from you guys. There was a ton of chat and chatter back and forth between all you guys. We had a lot of people talking, so that's great. I think I caught all of the questions and comments from you guys. If there was anything that I missed, always, always, always reach out, email or uh, comment in on the video here. I'd be happy to, happy to answer them. All right, next class. Next week, Thursday, it is going to be December 7th, 11 o'clock. We will be going live probably about 10 minutes before we'll start chatting. And uh, that's when we're going live. It's going to be some sort of case study. You guys are just going to have to make sure to join us on the 7th to see what it is. I have two vehicles, one vehicle lined up and hopefully a second one coming in for uh, two different case studies that we're just going to kind of work through. It's going to be more of a relaxed class. We're just going to run through some diagnoses. Diagnoses? Diagnoses? Uh, we're going to run through a couple diagnoses on two different vehicles. Uh, that we're going to have in the shop, hopefully. And uh, you'll just have to join us on December 7th at 11 o'clock to uh, see what those are. So without um, any other questions or anything, I think this is about it. I'm just going to quickly, that looks good. Um, I think I answered all the questions. So again, guys, if you have anything else, please reach out. If you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. Check us out on social, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, we're always out there posting new stuff. Uh, so make sure to check that out. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share it with your friends. All right, so that's going to be it for today. We'll see you guys next week, Thursday, December 7th at 11 o'clock a.m. when we go live with our next class. We're going to go over some sort of case study. So we'll see you then. Happy wrenching, everyone, and have a great weekend. Thank you.